So, you just saw the flash, brighter than a thousand suns, prettier than any firework, and universally recognized as the international signal for your day just got significantly worse. First off, congratulations. If you're seeing the flash and not currently vaporizing into carbon shadow on the sidewalk, you've survived the easy part. The blast wave is coming, sure, but that's just win with an attitude. The real problem, the thing that turns survivors into statistics, is what comes next. The sky is about to vomit radioactive sand all over your neighborhood. Welcome to the apocalypse. Stop screaming, you're wasting oxygen. Here is how you survive the end of the world using physics, cowardice, and a mattress. Step 1. Embrace the dirt. If you see the flash, do not stand there admiring the mushroom cloud like a tourist. You have seconds before the shockwave arrives. Drop. Face down. Hands under your body to protect them from the heat. Open your mouth slightly. I know you look ridiculous, but an open mouth helps equalize pressure so your eardrums don't pop like cheap balloons. Once the glass stops shattering and the car alarms start wailing, you have a choice. Most people will run to their cars. Those people are about to die in a traffic jam made of melted rubber and panic. You are not going to do that. You have about 15 to 20 minutes before the fallout. The radioactive dust starts raining down. That is your sprint window. Step 2. Build a fort of cowardice. You don't need a billion dollar government bunker. You need mass. Concrete, brick, dirt, books, water. Radiation is lazy. It hates going through heavy stuff. Get inside the nearest sturdy building. Go to the center, not the window seat. Windows are just holes waiting to let the spicy air in. You want to put as much material between you and the outside world as possible. A basement is good. A sub-basement is better. The middle of a parking garage is a palace. If you're stuck in a house, build a fortress. Drag mattresses, bookcases, and that ugly solid oak table your aunt gave you into the center of the room. Pile it up. You are building a cave. Get inside. This isn't the time for dignity. It's the time for density. Every inch of concrete, every book, every layer of junk cuts the radiation in half. You're literally hiding behind your possessions. Step 3. The Spicy Sand Here is the science lesson that will save your skin. Fallout isn't a magic green gas. It's dirt, it's dust, and debris that got sucked up, cooked in a nuclear fireball, and is now falling back down. It looks like sand, ash, or grit. If it touches you, it burns you. If you breathe it, you cook from the inside out. If you were outside when the dust started falling, strip. Take off your outer layer of clothes gently. Don't shake them like you're at a disco or you'll just fling radiation into the air. Put the clothes in a bag, seal the bag, and throw it as far away from you as physically possible. Wash your spin with soap and water. Blow your nose, clean your ears, and listen closely. Do not use hair conditioner. Shampoo is fine, soap is fine, but conditioner binds to your hair shafts. It acts like glue for radioactive dust. If you condition your hair today, you are basically laminating death onto your head. Do not be the person who survives a nuke only to die because they wanted silky smooth hair. Step 4. The Boring Waiting Game Now comes the hardest part. You sit there. The movies tell you to grab a shotgun and fight mutants. Reality tells you to sit in your mattress for and pee in a bucket. The first 24 hours are critical. The radiation levels drop by 50% in just 7 hours. In 48 hours, it's down to 1%. This is the 710 rule of nuclear physics. Time is your best weapon. While your neighbors are running around outside trying to loot a Best Buy in a radioactive storm, you are sitting still, eating cold beans and letting physics kill the radiation for you. Do not drink the tap water. The treatment plants are gone. Do not eat food from the garden. Stick to the cans. Stick to the bottled water. Step 5. The New Normal 
After three days, the air outside is still dangerous, but it's not instant death anymore. You can emerge, but look at the world differently. Smooth surfaces are safer, rain washes the dust off. Rough surfaces, grass and trees are traps, they hold the dust. You made it. You didn't win a prize and the internet is definitely down, but you're breathing. You survived because you respected the physics, you ditched the conditioner, and you knew that in a world gone mad, the smartest thing you can be is a coward hiding under a pile of books. Now, go check if your can opener still works.